Hello， 大家好，欢迎加入一剑军外套，每周跟您军事外交 talk， 我是向政委，今天要来跟大家聊聊关问，之前已经有预告了哦。那因为台湾周边的海底缆线呢，不断遭到中国方面的骚扰跟侵袭，那为了强化我们的通讯韧性，我们跟英国的 u t o s a t OneWeb 公司签订了合作，来推动低轨卫星的备援网络，而且已经部分在我们的救灾过程当中使用到了。但是我们斗进双边呃合作的重。况为何？还有之前传出频宽不够的问题，解决了吗？还有大家最关心的就是我们消费者什么时候可以使用呢？赶快来听听看这集的访谈。今天非常荣幸能邀请到 Utopia s OneWay 的亚太区副总裁，你好，来接受我们访谈。Hello， 你好 ，Welcome to Taiwan。Thank you. Pleased to be here. Wow. Uh, you have been here so many times. Uh, could you share that? Uh, what brought you to Taiwan this time? Um. I mean, one. Yeah. I think for Utilsat One Web, I must say Taiwan is a very, very important market.、Mm -hmm. Our partnership with partners like Chungwa Telecom here are very important to us.、Mm -hmm. So, of course, that's one big thing that brings me back.、Mm -hmm. But besides that, I love Taipei. <laughs> love the food you have here to offer. Love the people. So it's always good to come back. It's great, and we are lucky to have you here. And、uh, because our audience is eager to know OneWeb's current、uh, operation in Taiwan, so how would you describe the current stage of OneWeb deployment in Taiwan? Okay.、Um, as I mentioned, one、uh, just reiterating、uh, that Taiwan is an important market strategically for us,、yeah. and our partnership with Chungwa Telecom is very important to us. Uh, Taiwan, as you may know, we've already been live with our services for、uh, most part of this full year.、Mm -hmm. So we are live.、Uh, we are fully deployed in Taiwan across multiple use cases through our strategic partner Chungwa Telecom,、mm -hmm. and、uh, I hope to keep、uh, developing on this partnership and our partnerships in Taiwan and、uh, deploying our services even more for the use of the region. Okay. I remember in your last interview you mentioned about the、uh, Generation 1.5 sat satellite、yes. and how that、uh, promised a higher capacity improved latency,、yes. right? And uh, when uh, can Taiwan expect to、uh, benefit from this upgrade? Excellent.、Um, mm. I think it's a good question. In fact, before I talk about Gen 1.5, I do have a、uh, development to share. Within our current generation itself,、mm -hmm. we've been able to.、Uh, Technically, release more capacity for the use of Taiwan,、okay. and、uh, which is what has been shared with our partner Chungwa Telecom. So even as we speak, before a Gen 1.5, we have almost 60 to 70 percent more capacity available than what was initially promised for Taiwan, because we folded it from other.、Uh, you know, we have these beams, so we can fold in more capacity. So、mm -hmm. even as we speak now,、okay. we have more capacity available. Now, what was called Gen 1.5, now we call it Gen 1 replenishment and Gen 1 enhanced.、Mm -hmm. Now, I'm I'm pleased to share that we've already、uh, contracted 440 more satellites, which will start,、um, you know,、uh, getting rolled out by the end of 2026 and getting launched by the end of 2026. Over in the 2027 timeframe, they will be in orbit. So not all 440 in 2027, but between the 2027 and 28 timeframe, the 440 satellites go live.、Mm -hmm. Now, what that ensures is a couple of things, which is continuity and replenishment of the some of the early、uh, satellites that go end of life, but also adding more capability, more technical capability in our satellites,、mm -hmm. and more capacity per UT. And a couple of technological developments before we go on to our future, which is called the next generation.、Mm -hmm. But、uh, that will be、um, completed by 2027, right? Yes. So、mm. 26 end.、Mm. So essentially, it's a good continuity and transition program.、Mm -hmm. What we、uh, see the benefit of、uh, Utilsat OneWeb is we are here and now.、Mm. So we have a lot of learnings from actually having a constellation. And partners and telcos using that constellation. Initially, our thinking was, Gen One finishes, we move people to a Generation Two. But more and more, you realize as you deploy, which a lot of our peers who are still building constellations will realize, we've had a huge learning curve. What do telcos want? What do customers want? Continuity and improvement. It's not a shutdown. 
and he start with new deployments, new user terminals. It was the continuity roadmap. So essentially, from 2027 onwards itself, we'll start building more and more satellites and more capability mm -hmm. to replace some of the older satellites. And you're right, in 28 as well, we continue a program of adding more satellites. Do we need them? No, but it will add more capability and more uh, technical capability as well into our constellation. So yes, starting 27, we start rolling out what was called Gen 1.5. Now we call it Gen 1 Replacement and Gen 1 Enhancement. Including news, the bandwidth and capacity have been described as ongoing challenge for one web surface in Taiwan. So um, uh, how fast can we, you know, to improve that? As I said, mm. even today. Yeah. So now um, I think I would though like to recap the improvement, so to say, has already happened. I think there is some legacy uh, belief and thinking that, uh, you know, that service still needed improvement but if i actually recap what initially we had done if you recall the unfortunate earthquake etc that happened last year yeah. we were not network ready for example our satellites were there but we actually need ground network yeah. for 100 percent availability mm -hmm. uh, so we didn't have the full ground coverage but we worked with our partner and there was a critical requirement in an earthquake situation where versus zero connectivity, if you have 50% connectivity also, it's worth going live mm -hmm. versus being unconnected. So we took a conscious call to go and serve the community in that disaster situation. So, but the reality is the network was almost like saying half ready. When we went live this year, we had full coverage in Taiwan, in the Taiwan territorial waters and the periphery islands, mm -hmm. which is where you, we already have demonstrated improved network quality. Mm -hmm. That is number one. Number two, as I mentioned, we are constantly working to serve Taiwan better. Mm -hmm. So we have, uh, again, within our current generation itself, been able to release more capacity for yeah. Taiwan. Mm -hmm. So that improvement curve, step one, already happened with the coverage expansion. But again, we are consistently working along with our partner to get more capacity available to go into better, uh, go into newer use cases. I mean, we are also, uh, we've heavily deployed our comms on the move, comms on the pause and fixed terminals. But now, uh, slowly and steadily, we are uh, looking to deploy more maritime use cases in Taiwan as well along uh, with our partner. Okay, um, yeah. our audience, including me, that we are so curious that will uh, one web operate on the B2C model in the future? Ah, good question. <laughs> um, the answer is a no, because, mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll talk about it as well, because uh, as you know, our focus has been B2B and B2G, mm -hmm. but built on a partnership strategy. The key to our business model mm -hmm. is the partnerships we build. And that premise stress on a couple of factors. One, we believe satellite should be playing a complementary role to terrestrial networks. Mm -hmm. So we are primary where for a telco or an ISP or for a government, there is no other form of connectivity that is technically or commercially viable. And we are a good secondary source of connectivity in cases where terrestrial is not available, disaster recovery, emergency uh, response, aviation, maritime, secure, resilient, government use, uh, defense use. Yeah. So A, we believe we are built to suit for those kind of use cases. Direct to consumer today is highly well served through terrestrial networks and the affordability etc is a key sec key thing to think about when you're going direct to consumer number one second is again coming back to the partnership model mm -hmm. we believe the telcos isps and the local operators really know the needs of their regions their countries a lot better than a global constellation mm -hmm. provider can ever know so we actually work with our local partners to come up with solutions commercially technically 
which are better suited to the local requirements. Okay. We don't say we are a best effort or one size fits all solution. A Chungwa knows a lot better what Taiwan needs than a global constellation mm -hmm. based in UK would. So it's marrying the local ability, mm -hmm. local control with a global um, you know, service and technology that we have. Mm -hmm. And um, just to summarize lastly on that, um, the other element is the way we've differentiated ourselves is while we may be a global uh, provider, a lot of our data, our traffic management, our security, our encryption is localized, mm -hmm. which gives a lot of comfort and confidence to the telcos and governments in the country. Okay. So, long answer to your short question, <laughs> our, our, mm. our focus and goal will remain B2B and B2G okay. through local partners. We are not targeting the direct-to-consumer uh, segment. Okay. okay. <laughs> Kind of you know, sad, but, okay, but we can understand. Yeah, yeah. Yes. But uh, also, according to news, our government is also considering of using um, Cooper or locally made satellite. And do you see them as competitors, or um, what, what makes you? Uh, what, what, what do you think makes one web the right place for Taiwan? Okay, a um, mm. couple of points. Um, mm. One, the most important point: we are here and now. Mm. We are the only. Leo constellation that is serving Taiwan and we are committed to continuously invest, innovate and serve Taiwan. Mm -hmm. So that's the number one differentiation that we have. Okay. Of course there will be other players. Uh, we all know um, in the telco world also multiple operators exist and serve one country. We are talking about serving the globe. There will be multiple, multiple operators but yes Again, goes back to the point, what our differentiation is, we only work with terrestrial operators, local operators who are, uh, you know, who see us as a, you know, a connectivity tool in their toolkit. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, A, built to suit our solutions, will only work with the local operator and find those synergies where the local flares benefit in integrating us. Mm. We're not here to compete with any local mm. operator. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, um, and at the end of the day, uh, governments want the resilience, want the reliability, and want the regionalization. And I said the security and encryption layer, which is something we've already proven uh, to the Taiwanese government and mm. the various agencies here. So that is, of course, a key differentiation that we have and we hope to continue to build on it as we go forward. Mm, and especially you are very uh, like a trustful uh, partner, right? For Taiwanese people. Absolutely, mm. absolutely. Like it very correctly said, um, uh, you know, we've, uh, we want to continue to build on what we have. Like I said, we are actively deployed on a couple of use cases, but we don't stop here. Today we are talking about a lot of uh, interesting innovating, innovative things that we could do along with the likes of Chungwa Telecom, build more local captive infrastructure to serve uh, the government and defense needs in a better manner, uh, pick up some of the best practices of uh, what we've deployed in other Asian markets and bring it to Taiwan as well. Mm. So we want to work with you closer and deeper, but um, you know, uh, within Taiwan's industrial um, Supply chain. I mean, uh, supply chain. That uh, what parts do uh, what parts do you think consider the most valuable for one web? Oh, I mean, you're <laughs> talking about Taiwan, which is uh, the amazing frontier of technology, manufacturing, development, be it in telecoms, be it in semiconductors. So you know, the scope is very far and wide. Mm. You look at anything in the connectivity ecosystem. Taiwan's playing a role even today in a lot of our user terminal components in fact all of our user terminals manufactured by anyone you have components uh, uh, from Taiwanese companies be it Jonsa, be it Rapitec uh, but that's really the tip of the iceberg we have a lot of conversations ongoing with Taiwanese companies uh, from ranging from uh, user terminals to satellites to what have you so Essentially, I think, um, I mean, the whole world knows uh, Taiwan's uh, frontier in technology and innovation. 
and we hope to be able to leverage that and uh, uh, build this relationship uh, deeper and stronger. Wow, and for you personally, you know, do you have any ambitions or goals to achieve in the near future? Uh, personally, I think A, uh, I take it as a personal goal as well to serve uh, the APAC region and the wider globe uh, more actively with our service. I believe, um, you know, technology uh, and connectivity is a force for good. Uh, we have invested billions of dollars and we've just just about you know started rolling out our services globally so a my personal goal is to be able to get the power of our leo constellation in the hands of a lot more uh, you know customers governments etc to really benefit from uh, satellite connectivity uh, and uh, another personal goal would be to Come and spend more time in Taiwan. <laughs> that would be great. And thank you so much. And we hope you enjoy time Taiwan and especially enjoy Taiwanese food. Thank you. <laughs> as I'm much sure as you I can. Will. I'm sure I will. Thank you for your time. It was lovely being here and talking with you. Thank you. It's our pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 好，我们来帮大家整理一下刚刚访谈的重点。简单来说，他们在二零二六年开始会陆陆续续发射四百四十颗的卫星，来替换老旧的卫星，来提高频宽跟降低所谓的延迟率。那他们目前呢所覆盖的范围已经涵盖了台湾本岛、我们的领海，还有我们周边的离岛，都已经在它的服务范围之内。只是说，他们现在推动的是 B to B， 就是企业对企业，还有 B to G， 就是企业对政府。并没有开放 B to C， 就是开放消费者所使用。所以啊，我们一般民众如果想要使用低轨卫星来联系的话，恐怕还要再等等等看未来有没有其他的机会喽。好，那以上就是这集的一件军外套，希望对大家都有帮助。那如果有任何疑问的话呢，欢迎在我们节目下方留言，告诉我们你的想法，也记得帮我们订阅、按赞跟分享。那我们就下集再见喽，拜拜。